Thank you, sir. I'm very grateful for you, to you for giving me this opportunity to speak on the demands for grants of the Ministry of Civil Aviation. Sir, at the outset, I would like to thank our Honorable Prime Minister and our Honorable Civil Aviation Minister, Sri Sindhyaji, and uh, Honorable Minister, Sri V.K. Singh Ji, for the safe evacuation of around 23,000 Indian nationals from the war-stricken country of Ukraine. So had it not it been for the towering personality of our Prime Minister and the country's growing influence in the world, uh, the Operation Ganga for evacuating Indian nationals from the Ukraine would not have been successful. So under the able guidance of our visionary Prime Minister, India is taking rapid strides towards being a part of the developed world. And modernizing our aviation sector is an important step towards that goal. So the importance of this sector can be gauged from the fact that the air transport industry, which includes airlines and its supply chain, given estimated support of 13 billion US dollars to our GDP. And if you add another 22 billion support to our country's GDP from the spending by foreign tourists, the total contribution to our GDP comes to around 35 billion US dollars, a significant sum. Sir. So India by 2024 is projected to be the third largest aviation market in the world, overtaking UK. So the rapid rise in the number of air travelers is an ample proof of the successful policies of our government that has helped to increase the income of a large middle class, which is a, one of the major growth factors for the growth of the uh, in airline industry. Sir. So the vision to enable people to have access to safe, secure, sustainable, and affordable air services in world-class civil aviation, our government has taken important steps which has resulted in a rapid growth in air travel and which also reflects the pace of economic growth of our country. Regarding this, in pursuit of these goals, the government of India has announced major civil aviation reforms under the Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhyansa. So one of the major reforms is the regional connectivity scheme. Under this RCS Uran scheme, the government has achieved better connectivity to different regions of the world, of the country, which were till now devoid of air travel. The issuance of route dispersal guidelines has further ensured that even the remote areas falling under Category 2 and Category 3 are now being connected by air services. To enhance air connectivity in the Northeast region, the budgetary allocation of Rs. 24 crores has been made, and this will further ensure tourist inflow to these remote areas and create employment opportunities for the local people in these areas. So under the RCS Oran scheme, approximately 34,74,000 passengers have been flown and 30, 335 routes have been awarded in 2019. 33 airports have been covered, out of which till now 20 airports were not served. So the decision to build international airports in Varanasi and Kushinagar and a small airport at Shavasti is an important step. Please. Sir, to promote the Buddhist circuit and it will increase the foreign uh, inflow of tourists in, from Sri Lanka, China and Southeast Asian nations. Sir, so I would also request the Honorable Minister to upgrade the airstrip in Shavasti so that a larger planes can operate from there, sir. So the airport development uh, plan through the PPP model has led to world-class services being given to our passengers now. And an additional investment of around 13,000 crore rupees to be made by private players and 12 airports in the first and second round will also ensure better infrastructural facilities for us. So one of the most important decisions of our government has been to establish the global hub for maintenance, repair and overhaul of aircraft. Sir, what happened to us was that our airlines ke planes were sent to the airlines for maintenance and repair. And no doubt that would incur a lot of expenditure on the airlines and also loss, loss of foreign exchange. So the establishment of a MRO hub in the country will not only save costs but also increase the liquidity of our airlines. The MRO service industry, which was, sir, in uh, 2018, it was valued at $800 million is now projected to reach $2.4 billion US dollars by 2028. The lower labor cost in our country will also attract foreign countries to have the aircraft service in India. And this decision of convergence of civil MROs with the defense sector will have further long-term benefits for the airlines by bringing down maintenance costs and creating economies of scale. No doubt it's going to create a lot of job opportunities for people here, sir. <coughs> 
So the application of drones in day-to-day -day life is increasing all over the world. And very soon, their services are going to be indispensable in the near future, especially in the areas of survey, defense and security, and delivery of critical medical supplies in remote areas of the country. So the central government, under the leadership of Honorable, Minister, Honorable Prime Minister Shri Modi ji, has approved the production-linked incentive scheme for drones and drone components. This is a follow-through of the liberation of drone rules, which were released in August 2021. So this is another very far-sighted reform of the government. And over the span of next three years, the government has targeted to attain a minimum of rupees 5,000 crore in, the, in this industry. And this will create a job opportunities for 10,000 people. So some of the main challenges facing this sector continue to be infrastructural development, high fuel cost, and the skill deficit. So the fuel cost as a percentage of operating charges amounts to almost 45% to airlines while the global average is only 30%. The price of aviation fuel in India are approximately 60% higher than those of the ASEAN countries and the Middle East countries. And this is due mainly due to the higher central and state taxes. So taxation and pricing structure of aviation turbine fuel should be aligned to global benchmarks by considering bringing it under the ambit of GST. This will help to make our airlines globally competitive and also help in establishing international travel hubs in our country. So the, regarding skill deficit, there is a significant shortage and gaps in the availability of skill of industry recognized skills Glute from airline de. pilots no, and crew de. to maintenance and ground handling personnel. So this can be overcome by there's a need to promote a collaboration between uh, equipment manufacturers, industry and educational institutes to assimilate the latest technology and marginal practices in the aviation industry, and this will help to create further trained personnel that are required. So with your permission, I'd like to make a few small suggestions to the Honorable uh, please, uh, Minister. Please. So the standards of service documents of the DGCA needs to be adhered to. Right now, it is not being uh, closely uh, followed. So this would help in the timely issue of licenses for trainees and pilots, and non-compliances regarding these documents adversely affects the human resource side of the aviation industry. So another important issue is the living of GST on aviation fuel. Sir, aviation fuel is used in the training aircraft, which are piston engine aircraft. Sir, last two points. Well, 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 sir, last. Yes. And this GST, we have only 5-7 crore earnings. But in 2021, sir, our 358 students came out of training. Now, their average cost is 50 lakh rupees. If you calculate that, it comes to a foreign exchange loss, loss of 179 crores. So 179 crores ko offset karne ke liye agar 7-8 crore ka fayda ho raha hai sir to isko ek baar dekhna chahiye sir there is a there should be a sir 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 last sir please sir last two points sir sir there should sir har district mein police line mein ek helipad hota hai sir this should be allowed to be used by helicopter operators free of cost isse jo hamari district nahi bhi connected hai aur jo remote areas mein hai wahan bhi fir log air travel kar sakenge, especially kahi emergency ho, medical emergency okay, ho uske okay. liye. So this is actually the last point, sir. Sir, there's a policy which says that aircraft older than 15 years no, are no. not allowed to be imported. Now, please. Sir, this is the last point. Sir, ye, e, hum logo ke country se, bahut saari countries ke saath bilateral agreements hain. And agar unki country, jo exporter country, agar wo airworthiness certificate de de, jo hamari DG, jo DG se recognize kar le, so, sir, our entire sare operators will get a lot of low-cost low cost pe aircraft, which will service our two-tier and second-tier, three-tier airports.